What's up guys? My name is Sayyid Ahmed. Uh, uh, this is going to be the first video on my YouTube channel. I'm planning on making this YouTube channel about day trading, investing, entrepreneurship in general. Uh, I trade the foreign exchange market and I've been trading for over two years now. And I trade the New York session and I trade a majority of the pairs that are listed. And so I'm going to make this YouTube channel just about education on the forex market, about day trading, giving you guys tips and just any uh, trade breakdowns as well. Uh, this video is going to be a trade breakdown of a trade I took last week on Monday on CAD JPY. It was a long position. And yeah, so if you guys have anything that you want me to cover, if you guys have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll get to them. I'm going to try to post three videos every single week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I'm going to try to reply to as many comments as I can. And we'll see how this goes. Honestly, I'm pretty excited. I'm new to this. So it's definitely going to be a big thing and a new experience. So we'll see how it goes. So like I said before, this is going to be a trade breakdown video on the trade I took on Monday, May 16th. It was a long position on CAD JPY. And I'm going to go over why I took the trade, what I saw, um, why I think it was a good trade, what ended up happening, my mindset going through the trade, everything. So yeah, let me just share my screen real quick and we'll get to it. All right, so this was the trade. I took it at about 10, 10, once this 10 or five candle closed. And I traded New York, the New York and London crossover session. So I only trade for four hours. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, I trade from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. After 12 p.m., I just don't take any more trades. If I have a trade, I would just let it run. I don't cut it, but I am very cautious about the movements and how candles are forming and all that because price and uh, volume tends to die down after 12 p.m. So I'm very cautious. I tend to watch any trade that I have that is past 12 p.m. a little bit more closely and I'm a little bit more risk averse with it. But as you can see this trade, I took it once the 10.05 candle closed. And so I'm gonna start down. We always start off with the top down analysis. That's number one, it's the most important thing. You wanna be in line with the trend at all given times because the trend is your friend, honestly. I mean, you probably heard that from everybody but it is as true as ever. You really want to be in line with the trend because you really don't want to be fighting against a moving train. Uh, I've heard that expression before. And you can you really stop a moving train by yourself? Probably not. So you don't want to be fighting against it. So we're going to go on the one hour time frame. I use one hour for a general picture as to what's happening. And then I use the 15 minute to actually see what the intraday trend is like and make sure that the one hour and the 15 minute coincide. And once I know that both of these time frames are coinciding and all giving the same exact trend, then I'm gonna to go to the five minute to look for entries and I'll go over that real quick. So going to May 16th on the one hour real quick, we see that, and you don't really wanna be looking like all the way past like this because you're not really gonna get a clear picture. Honestly, especially when I'm entering on the five minute time frame, seeing this much data is not gonna help me whatsoever. So you really wanna just zoom in on these like past, like I wanna say what, 20, 30 candles before and see what the overall price section is and what it's like. So we see higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So we're expecting another higher high to be made. And as you can see real quick, we have a support or a resistance, broken, turn support, broken, I mean, retested. And well, that's a trade alert I have on one of the trades I'm already in. I'll go over that a little bit as well at the end but yeah so resistance broke turn support rejected and there's a lot of bullish momentum so we do expect that the trend is going to continue going up so now once i know that what's the overall trend is like i'm going to switch down to the 15 minute time frame get a better feeling about what the intraday trend is like same thing as you can see well in an uptrend as you can see it's pretty easy to spot so now i'm going to go on the fifth five minute time frame actually and i'm going to go and try to find entries. Now, for the five minute time frame, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at zones that are key levers, and I'm gonna to try to mark up those key levers. And if I can't really find any on the five minute, I'm gonna to try to find them on the 15 minute. It's a little bit easier to find them on a 15 minute. You want key levers uh, because they're gonna act as strong levers that price will likely bounce off of. And so if you can get a key level, and you get price to bounce off a, the key level in line with the trend, it's gonna have multiple confluence, you're gonna have multiple confluences for a trade. And the more confluences you have for a trade, the easier it's gonna be 
and the more likelihood it is that you're actually going to end up winning the trade. So you want to look for as many confluences as you can, but don't overdo it. I, a lot of times, and I faced this in the beginning of my trading journey as well, you end up having analysis paralysis. You were like, oh, can I have one more confluence? Can I have, maybe I should wait until this happens. And what ends up happening is that price just ends up blasting and going where you thought it was going to go, but you just never actually ended up entering because you had analysis paralysis. You were too busy waiting for another confluence. So I would suggest just writing down a couple of confluences you might want that might be key levels, rejections off key levels, maybe an indicator such as the RSI to help you with it. Write down a plan, a step-by-step plan. And once, just have it as an open eye with you at all times, whether that be on a notepad or actually like Google Docs. And once uh, the markets are doing whatever you want, just check it. Did it tick off checklist one, checklist two, checklist three? If it did all three, then go and take the trade. You really want to be emotionless about it and you just got to execute, get your reps in. The more you do execution, the more execution you do, the better you're just going to be at it. And all right, I don't want to make this a mindset video. This is a trade recap video. So going down on the five minute time frame, what I see is that right over here, there was a key level over here. And just bringing that all the way to the right, I see that price has broken through retests and shoots up, breaks through, uh, goes back down, retests, shoots up again. Now we see it's breaking through and that's retesting once again. So. I don't really like to look for any key levels that have bounced a lot. Oh, that price has bounced off a lot. If it's bounced off like six or seven times, I'm really going to avoid that key level because the more price ends up testing it, the less explosive price will be from that key level and the less reliable it will be. So you don't really want to be taking anything more than I think three or four touches. Then you just kind of want to avoid it. So I see this key level and I see that, okay, every time it breaks through retests, and it comes back to this key level, it's going super high. I mean, it's exploding off the key level, not super high. Uh, so now when you're looking for confluences that I have to take this trade, I see that the overall trend on the one hour time frame is matching up with the trend that I want. And now when with the with a uptrend. And now looking at the five 15 minute time frame, I know that both the one hour and the 15 minute time frame are both uptrends. So now I go down to the five minute time frame. And I try to find a key level and I see that in the key level that I found, there have been multiple times where price has broke through the key level, retested the key level. When it retests, it explodes to the upside. So these are all major confluences. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait for price to come back to the key level for the third touch. And when it touches, I want strong price action and to tell me that, hey, price is gonna go up again. And that'll give me enough confluence to take the trade, honestly. And so what I do is I wait for strong price action. And as you can see, we got one wick rejection here, and then we got another wick rejection here. So we got a solid of, I wanna say solid four wick rejections. And I see bullish momentum stepping in. I wait for a MACD divergence. This is important. I like divergences a lot. You may not agree with me on this, but divergence is what I create. Everybody has their own thing. So don't see me trading divergence and think that you need to add the MACD on your chart and start trading divergences. Don't do that. Back test it. Make sure that's something you actually understand. If you don't understand it, don't use it. But I like it because you get to see the reversal on the five minute time frame that I want that will allow me to get good entries. Because on the one hour time frame, I know that we're in an uptrend. And on a 15 minute time frame, I know we're on an uptrend. However, on this time, on the five minute time frame, we see price is currently breaking through structure. So what we might have is a shift to the downtrend. And we don't really know that because we have a higher high, higher low, higher high, not necessarily a higher low, but it breaks down through the previous higher low. And then it ends up giving you a lower high and potentially a lower low. So we could be shifting into a downtrend. So in order to avoid any confusion that I might have, telling me that, hey, maybe we're shifting into a downtrend. I look for a divergence, showing me that we're gonna reverse from a downtrend back to the overall higher time frame trend, which is the uptrend. So as you can see, price ends up making a lower low, but on the MACD, price is actually making a higher high. So once the divergence is confirmed, once, this, once these red bars on the histogram turns into a green bar, and I get the wick rejections, I have the bullish momentum, I enter the trade. 
Now, while I'm actually in the trade, as you can see, it went up a good amount, but then it reversed again. And I want to say how much? It went up around 15 pips, and then it reversed again. So it went up about, I want to say, like 0.5 R before reversing on me. And now, for a while, I was actually just sitting in drawdown. And that's perfectly fine. Drawdown is normal. You're not going to have sniper entries. Don't let these forex gurus fool you. Fool you. Uh, sniper entries aren't common. They can happen for sure, but it's not always a given. Drawdown is normal. Uh, don't think about closing your trades. Just remember that you backtested a plan. Hopefully, you backtested a plan. If you didn't, then you should definitely backtest the strategy and make a rule-based plan. So that way, when stuff like this happens, when you're in drawdown, you don't think about closing too early. Because if you close too early, guess what would have happened? You would have missed out on it taking the profit target of about 42 pips. So whenever drawdown happens, when anything happens, just make sure to keep a cool head, make sure to review over your plan and see, should I close the trade or should I just leave the trade open? For me, my rules say that once I enter a trade, I leave it open and I don't touch it until it hits either my one or take profit or my stop loss. And I actually have two take profits on all of my trades. One of the take profits is around here on one R. Once price reaches one R, which you can see it did on the uh, 1 10 p.m. candle, what's going to end up happening is I move my stop loss to break even. And then my second take profit always ends up being a one and a half R, which was, I think, around here <clears throat> at 42 pips, roughly. So once that ends up happening, once I hit one hour on trade, I then move my stop list to break even. Why? Because I've already made one hour. If I'm risking, let's say, 2% of per trade, which I do, if I've already made 2%, why would I leave my stop loss open and just have the ability to potentially lose out on 2% when I've already made 2%? There's no reason for me to have a uh, risk open on the table, honestly. And I've back tested this, and moving my stop list to break even is a good move. So I end up moving stop list to break even, and I just leave it. Whatever happens, happens. If I get, if my stop loss gets hit, I break even, then so be it. Honestly, as a trader, you always have to remember that whenever you place a trade, you have to think about the fact that you've actually already lost some money. So if you win, then it's a good thing. But if you lose, not really that big of a deal because you've already accepted the loss. And you know that if you have an edge over the long run, you just keep on executing, you're going to win. So at this point in time, when I move my stop list to break even, I was chilling because either I lose, either I don't lose any money or I make money. I have no risk. So there's really nothing to worry about. So I let the trade play out. Uh, over here was a little bit of fluctuations. And I was thinking, like, should I take my trade? Like, should I take my, close my trade early or not? And as I said before, I reviewed my plan and my plan does not say to take it early, to close my trades early. So I just didn't. I let it go and it hit my take profit out. And also, as you can see, uh, if I had let the trade go, I could have hit a potential 2.3 R trade. Uh, but you're never going to catch the tippy tops. Of, you're never going to catch the actual bottoms either. So, you know, I did close early. I did close at a 1.5 R and I could have gotten over a 2 R. But that's just the way trading works. You don't want to be greedy. You want to take what you got and you just want to be happy with it. So that being said, that was the trade I took. Uh, closed 42 pips up, approximately. Pretty good trade. Now I'm going to shift on to the other trade that I'm actually currently in. So let's see how that's doing. And oh, that's, that's tough. But hey, it is what it is. We were approximately, I want to say, we were almost six pips away from take profit. And my take profit was 28.4 pips. So we were close. Uh, currently, it had this huge reversal candle. I don't know what that's about. I don't think it's news. So... I don't know, maybe it's a market maker or something. So that's a trade breakdown, uh, breaking down CAT JPY long position and the CHF JPY long position I'm in right now. It looks like it's going to hit break even. Uh, but yeah, make sure to like the video and subscribe. Uh, let me know if you guys want more videos like this. And if you have any other videos, ideas, just comment in down below and I'll make sure to uh, make them. I'll be trying to post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And yeah, let's see how this channel goes. All right, peace out, guys.